Thank you very much for coming here to talk about uh, MDS because there's just been a session here and I gather there was a lot to be said. Uh, for instance, the prognosis of MDS. Let me ask you first, uh, if I may, about the, the prognosis of MDS and its dependence on cytogenetics. Cytogenetics um, are very important to define the prognosis of patients with myelodysplastic syndromes. And there are efforts just at this very moment to um, make up a new cytogenetic scoring system uh, that will be included in an international prognostic scoring system for MDS patients. And specifically for elderly patients, what then? And this is for all the patients, but what has been shown at this uh, meeting here is that elderly patients have more cytogenetic abnormalities than younger people. So it is more important for the elderly patients. And what is being shown in this uh, cytogenetic new scoring system is that MDS is more complex than we thought previously and that certain subtypes, new subtypes of cytogenetic abnormalities will be added to what we had before. And in what way will this knowledge or those tests for those abnormalities affect your therapy decision making? Therapy decision making will be affected because there are some new abnormalities like 12P abnormality, 11Q abnormality and so on that are now being said to be very good or good risk and that would not affect us if we see them to say, oh, the patient is an intermediate risk, so doing poorer than we thought, but we will accept those as being uh, relatively good abnormalities and that will not affect our intensity of treatment for those patients. And Professor Santini, can I ask you what you made of this session here in Rome about looking at MDS in elderly patients that, that you've just been attending? What things came out of it? Well, one very interesting thing is the fact that we under-evaluate in some way uh, patient, elderly patients with MDS. Although MDS, uh, myelodysplastic syndrome, are a disease um, affecting mainly elderly patients. Uh, we tend to treat uh, with a supportive care or under-treat patients uh, who are elderly. Uh, older than 75, we reckon from the different studies. But in fact, the efficacy of treatment is equal to for, for elderly patients and for younger patients. And one important thing that uh, I really uh, want to stress is the fact that cytogenetics is very important, as we heard, and it's very important to do this analysis in elderly patients because our decision in treating elderly patients has to be based on cytogenetics as well. And how do you define elderly patients? That's a good question because it's very hard to, uh, to answer to it, in fact. Elderly patients are uh, traditionally considered as above 70 now uh, or 65. We actually apply a little bit too much the uh, parameters used for a hematopoietic stem cell transplant to define an elderly person, so above 65, above 70 now. What about comorbidities and the, the health this, of the patient? This is a very important issue because uh, chronological age is not as important as biological age. And as you know, biological age is uh, measured by the general health of the, of the patient, especially the presence of comorbidities, uh, together with the social status as well and uh, the economical situation in general. So it's a very important uh, evaluation. There are a lot of patients though with low risk disease, aren't there? And uh, for example, if you're making treatment decisions about low risk MDS, with 5Q minus or not 5Q minus, what difference does that make? In 5Q minus disease, lenalidomide has become the standard of care. Although the drug has not been approved, not reached yet approval in the European Union, uh, all over the world it's actually being accepted as the standard of care in patients with Del5Q. Now, um, it has also some interesting uh, effect in patients with non-DEL5Q disease, uh, where about 25 to 30 percent of patients do have erythroid responses that means reduce the transfusion dependence. However, non-DEL5Q disease is more complex. Uh, non-DEL5Q disease may uh, uh, 
react to erythropoietin treatment, may react to hyper um, hypomethylating agents may also react to immunosuppressive treatment. What clinical guidelines do you have for doctors about using lenalidomide, simple ones then? I think uh, the guidelines that people should follow have been published, the most recent guidelines probably are those from the Italian society and I, I think they have put up very well the algorithm uh, that we should use if we want to treat patients with lower or higher risk MDS and lenalidomide is part of that for the subgroup of DEL5Q. So you have to look at the algorithm, see what fits, and individualize to your patient. Absolutely. Uh, yes. But uh, hypomethylation is a standard of care. Uh, could it be uh, the standard of care in low-risk disease, for example? Yeah. Uh, now, you know that azacitidine has been approved by EMEA as a hypomethylating agent for treatment of higher-risk MDS patients. Um, and indeed, you have a success there in uh, prolonging overall survival, even in elderly patients. For lower-risk MDS cases, uh, we think that we can use uh, uh, azacitidine in particular cases, for instance, when uh, patients do become resistant to previous therapy like uh, EPO or erythropoietin or lenalidomide, being 5Q- or not. Uh, but... Uh, you have to be careful because, of course, as I cited, it may induce myelosuppression during the first cycle, as we know. So uh, there is room to apply this such a therapy for uh, low risk as well. Could I get you both to pull out some practical messages? Because this has been a busy meeting. It's well attended here. There's a lot of interest in refining the treatment of blood cancer in the elderly. Now, specifically in your session on MDS, what has come out? of this for the busy doctor that he or she can apply? For the busy doctor, in my opinion, the most important information is age does not prevent therapy. Instead, Valeria and others have shown at that meeting that even the very old patients, being over the age of 80, do benefit of uh, active treatment in this patient population. Hypomethylating agents were very effective even in patients over the age of 75 or 80 with advanced MDS. And in lower risk patients, it's even more true because alleviating uh, uh, transfusion dependence is something that especially elderly patients will benefit from. So it's not because a patient is old that you should actually reduce the amount of work you're doing for him, but you should actually intensify your care for him. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, because especially elderly patients do suffer a lot in coming frequently to the hospital for transfusion, and the burden of treatment for them is mainly because of transfusion. So as you said, alleviating them uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big task and their quality of life is going to improve uh, uh, substantially by being treated. Supportive care, it's, uh, it's not really supportive. On the contrary, it can, can decrease quality of life and uh, uh, for elderly patients is very important. Valeria, thank you very much. Uh, thank you also Aristotle for joining us here on eCancer Television. Thank you. Thank you.